All right. Before we get started, I just want to talk to you about what is a limit. When you, when you study calculus, the foundations are the foundation of calculus is all around a limit and a derivative. These first two weeks we're going to talk about a limit. The limit is a value, the value that the function is approaching. Okay? So let's say that I give you this function and I want to know the limit as the x values approach the x value of 2. So the limit as x approaches 2, that means I'm looking at what's occurring at the graph as it gets, the, what's, what's going on with the y value as I get closer and closer to the x value of 2. That's my example, okay? That is what a limit means. What value are, am I approaching in that function at this certain point on the x-axis? Does that make sense? Approaching, approaching. The way you read this, guys, is the limit. As x approaches a, there's going to be some number where x is at. The limit as x approaches a of the function equals the limit, okay? You're getting to the limit of that function. How close are we getting to that number? Okay? So, the limit as x approaches some number of whatever the function is equals this, okay? Now, you got to look at, guys... From the left and the right. Watch this now, or I'm going to lose you. When you got this function, as you got to look from both directions, left and right, if it approaches the same number from both left and right, then you have a limit. If it's approaching two different numbers, then the limit does not exist. Okay? Now, I don't want you to get this confused with this. You remember back in the day where I said, like, a, tell me, look at the graph, tell me what f of 7 is? You went to x equals 7 and went up and found the y value. You remember that? Okay, that's not the same thing as the limit. Limit is the values approaching. That's a definite answer. Does that make sense? Okay. Sometimes they are the same number, but they don't have to be, okay? Okay. All right. Now, as x approaches from left to right. Okay, here's some other notes you need to know. As x approaches some number... When you see this right here, guys, that means you strictly look at the left side of the function. If you see this plus, that means you're going to look at strictly the right side of the function. If, by this, if you had that, x as x approaches negative 1, that, that means you're looking at the left side of the function. And you forgot to turn your homework in on Friday, so I need you to turn that in today, okay? If you see this, guys... That means you're only concerned with what side of the function? The right. If you see this, guys, that means you've got, to check, you've got to take it upon yourself to check both of them. So if you ever see that, it means they're only concerned with the left. That means you're only checking it from the right. If there's not another symbol, that means you've got to check both of them. Does that make sense? Is it real good so far? The limit may or may not be the same as the right. If these, if you check the, both the left and right, it's not the same value, then it does not exist. And this is what I was talking about a while ago. F of some number may or may not equal L. The limit is what the function should be. F of X is what it is. That's key right there. The limit of the function should be, but F of X is what it is. Okay, this is going to make sense in just a minute. Okay, so watch here. I promise it's going to make sense. All right. We want to know, we're going to use this graph right here. And we want to know the limit. As x approaches what value? A. And that A, that number that's with the x means on the x-axis, okay? As x approaches A. Did I have a left or right symbol there? That means i got to check them both, okay? Of h of x. So watch this. If I come, okay, now here's what I'm looking at right here. As I come from the left, what value is it approaching at? What y value? 
one. As I come from the right, it's approaching what? One. That's your answer. That's your limit. You say, Mr. Hester, that's an open dot. I'm about to address that in just a second. If I had asked you this, now here, that first part, we were just talking about what is the limit, what value is approaching. But if I straight up ask you what f of a is, would it be 1? What would it be? Undefined. Because there's a what at the graph. A whole. Do you understand that? That's what that statement meant a while ago. So I'm going to put this over here. If I would have asked you f of a is undefined because there's a whole there. But the limit was it was approaching what value? One. Do you see the difference? That is what this meant right here meant. F of A may or not be equal to L or may not even exist. This did not exist right here. It's undefined. Does that make sense? The limit is a number it's approaching. When I ask you for F of something, you give me the actual answer. Does that make sense? It's going to make more sense, I promise you. Okay. Now, let's look at the limit on this. The limit as x approaches b. Okay? It doesn't have a plus or minus afterwards, so I gotta take it upon myself to check both of them. As I come from the left and I'm going to be on my x axis, what value is it? It's approaching this right here, isn't it? If I come from my right, it's approaching that value, isn't it? Do you see that? Are y'all sure? Is it approaching the same value? So what's your limit? Does not what? Does not exist. We're going to come back to these four. I want to stick with the grass for a minute so this will sink in, okay? down here. I want to know what is the f value of 2. That means my x coordinate is 2. That's my input. I want to know what the f of 2 value is. What is f of 2 equal to? Everybody take a moment in your group to look and discuss what is f of 2. Talk to your group. Okay, what did y'all come up with? Four. four. It's four. Very good. Because you remember, you go to your x-axis, you go up, it is at four. We've been doing that all year, haven't we? F of two is four. Okay? Now we want to know the limit. Sometimes these two numbers are the same. Sometimes they're not. But you see, I treat it like the limit as approaching from the left and the right. So I go here at two. As I come from the left, it is approaching what value? Four. As I come from the right, it's approaching what? So this is an example where both of them are the same answer. Does that make sense? They're both. As I get on this function, I write it from the left. It's getting closer to four. As I come down from the right, it's getting closer to four. So you're both here. The limit and the f of two is both equal to four. Does that make sense? Okay. Let's look at B. F of 3. I want the straight up answer for F of 3. I go to 3. I go up. What do I have there? I have an open dot, don't I? So what will be my answer here? Undefined or does not exist. You can put either one. Because it's undefined. There's an open dot there. Remember back to discontinuity, guys. We said that earlier on here. There's three types. You have jump. Removable, infinite. What is this an example of? A hole is what? Removable, because you removed it. Piecewise is jump, and asymptote is what? Infinite, because it keeps going and going. Do you remember those three types? You've got to know this in this part. Now, so f of 3 is does not exist, but let's take the limit of it. We're trying to see where did this function go, Max. On. We're trying to see where this function go. So here we go. I'm going to look at my x-axis. I'm looking at 3. I want to know what number is it approaching at this number right here. So, as I get on this function from the left, and I go up to 3, what value is it approaching? 4. 
Okay, there was no other sign on the side, so I need to check the right. As I come from the right, what number is approaching? Four. So your answer is four. Yes. Hurry quick because I'm about to do a very important example. Let's look at C, F of 1. I want to know what the value of 1 is. I look at 1. I got a closed and an open dot. Well, which one would I go with? Would I go with the closed or open dot? Closed. For F of 1, because that's what 1 is equal to, isn't it? So F of 1 equals what? 1. Now, we want to know the limit as X approaches 1. So I get on my left side of my function. Choo choo! What value is it going toward? Two. Okay. There's no plus or minus on this, so I gotta check the other side. Here we go. Choo choo! Which which value is it approaching? Both sides approaching two. Are they approaching the same number? So what's your limit? Two. Does that make sense? So do you understand the difference between an F of something value and a limit? The limit is the number it's approaching. F of something, you tell me the actual answer. Does that make sense? Can they be the same number? Yes. Do you see here they were the same number? But do they have to be? No. Do you see that? This is, not, this is better than hyperbolas and parabolas, isn't it? Do you all like this better than hyperbolas and parabolas? Posky, what you think? I want you to turn to page 9 in your notebook right now. Page 9. I want us to look at number 10. We're doing the same thing. answer these questions down here. Now, here's some function. I don't know the equation of function, but let's look here. Let's make sure we understand how to read this. If I look up here. A, the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of f of x. So I go to 1 right here. I go to 1. I'm on this function coming from the left. What value is it approaching? 3. three. That would be my answer. 3. Because it only said left, do I have to check the right side? No. B. The limit as x approaches 1 from the what side? So I get on my function. As I go toward 1, what is it approaching? 3. Three. Now on C, it says the limit as x approaches 1. Because there's not a plus or minus on the other side like that, would you have to take upon yourself to check both sides? Yes, but didn't you just do that here? Was it the same value? So overall, your limit's what? If these two had been different, then that would have been does not exist because your limits approach two different values. D. The limit as x approaches negative 5. Is there a plus or minus afterwards? So that means you got to take it upon yourself to check both left and right. So let's look here at negative 5. At negative 5. The limit is x goes to negative 5. Negative 5 is here. I'm going to come from the left. From the left, what y value is it approaching? It's approaching what? 2. As I come from the right, it's approaching what? Is it approaching the same number? So what's your answer here? That's not as it is. Okay. E. The limit as x goes to 5. Now there's no plus or minus. So do you have to check both sides? Okay, as I come from the left, 5 is right. As I come from the left, it's approaching what y value? 0. 
As I come from the right, it's approaching what value? It's approaching what? One. Is it the same value? So it does not exist. That's as hard as that gets. Shay, what we did earlier was we looked at this. The limit as x approaches 1 from the, what does that mean? Left. So that means you only look at the left. And this was from the right. But if it doesn't have that, that means you have to check both of them, okay? Are there any questions on that? Y'all good on that? Alright. What time is it? Alright, let's go on to the table. Use the table feature of a calculator to find each limit. Our learning target today, guys, is this. I can determine the limit of function from a table and a graph. From a table and a graph. Are y'all good on graphs? We just did the graph. I need a hand signal. Those are pretty easy. I love those problems. Love those problems. So tonight on your homework on that same page that we just did, you're, you will do you will do 911. 911 on that page. But we got some more to do. Now let's look at table. I want to teach you how because when you get to calculus, sometimes you have to look at the table function of your group. Um, calculator. So everybody needs a graphing calculator today. So if you don't have one, you'll be sharing one with your friend or something at the moment. All right. The first thing we want to know, we want to know what the limit is as x approaches 2 for this function 5x cubed. 5x cubed. So I'm going to go to my y equals and I'm going to plug in 5x cubed. I'm not going to hit graph. I'm just going to plug in 5x cubed. Now let me teach you the table button. It's above the window. I'm going to go second. Table set. Never mess with the independent or dependent. It's going to be auto. The only two things you can change is table start and delta table. And I'm going to tell you what this means. Table start means when you pull up your table, what number do you want to start at? I always do this one because I'm concerned with what's going on at 2 or 1. You see what I'm saying? Like whatever's in the problem. If it was as x approaches 9, I'll put 9 there. Okay? Um, what does delta table mean? What does a triangle mean in science and math class? What does delta mean? Change. That means what do you want your intervals in your table to be? The interval in your table. Do you want to go up by 1s? You put a 1 there. If you want to go up by 5s? You put 5. You go 5, 10, 15. If you want 10s, that's how you do it. But here, guys, we want to know what is happening is it gets very, very close. That's why I did 0 0.1, so it would be like 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4. .1 if you need a real small number, you can put 0 0.01 and it gets real smaller. But the minimum that you, I need you to put in there is 0 0.1, 0.1. Now, we're estimating using tables, so what Parker may get might be different from Melissa as long as there's a reasonable answer on these. I'm going to take that. Does that make sense? Because you're estimating looking at a table. All right, so I want to know what's going on as x approaches 2, so I put a 2 there, and I got 0 0.1. Now I'm going to hit second table. At 2, wait, is there a number? Is there something happening at 2? Is there a number at 2? So what would be your limit if there's a number at 2? If f of 2 equals 40, your limit's got to be what? 40. Because... It's continuous. There's nothing wrong. There's no discontinuity there. So on number one, I will put 40. Because there's an actual number at two value, is there? Does that make sense? All right. Let's look at the second one. Let's go back to it. Put in a different one. Make sure when you input this numerator and denominator, put in parentheses. Hey, Kevin's word. I went back to my table. After I input it, just make sure you input it. It looked like that in yours. X minus 1 divided by X squared minus yes, buddy. Oh, because your, yeah. your mode, you need to go to mode. And it's highlighted folder and you need to put it in function. Is that you can see? 
If you have R's, that means you need to go to mode, scroll down about the third row, and instead of having polar, you need to put it back in function form, okay? Does everybody understand how to do that? Okay. Now, go to table set. I'm going to start at once since I want to know what's going on in my limit here. Now, I'm going to hit second table. What that, what happened at one? There's an error. That means there's something going on there. That means it's discontinuous there. There's some type of discontinuity. First off, would this be jump? No, because this is not a piecewise function, is it? So let's think about what type of discontinuity is going there. Removable or infinite? So before you ask that, I want you to discuss in your group. Removable or infinite? Remo remember, removable is a whole, infinite is asset. Take a minute to discuss it. I want you to think about it. And look at the original problem. I see some groups having a great discussion. I see others just sitting there waiting for me to get the answer. All right, come back together. We know it's not jump, so what do you think it is? Why do you say removable? Because that's a um, difference of two squares, which means the x minus one cancel out. Perfect, so very good. Because can't you factor the x plus one and x minus one on the bottom of the x square? And couldn't you cross it out? When you can cross something out, it's removable. There's a hole. Very good. So there's a hole occurring at the graph at one. Okay, so let's look here. What would be a reasonable answer here? From we got from the right is 0 0.476, from the left 0 0.52. What could be just a reasonable answer we put down? 0 0.5. I'll say 0 0.5. You see, Mr. I put 0 0.49. I'm good. It's reasonable, isn't it? That's good. It's approaching what value? It's, they both approach the same value, so that means. All right. Let's look at number three. You just having to find a value, hun, that's falling between 0 0.48 and 0 0.53. I just picked 0 0.5. You see what I'm saying? Because the limit's coming from both sides. What value is it approaching? Okay. All right, number three. Let's put this one in. Change my table set to nine. When you do that, when I do that, what happens at nine in my table? There's an error. So it's discon discontinuous there, isn't it? Let's leave that to the original problem. We know it's not jump because it's not piecewise. So would that be infinite or removable? Look at your original problem. Infinite, you, can, you should automatically be able to, can I cancel anything out? Can I factor anything to get it canceled? So is it infinite or removable? Infinite. That means that this number at x equals 9 in my graph, there's an asymptote, be vertical or horizontal taking place, okay? Does that make sense to you? If I can cancel something out like I that last problem, like this right here, that's removable. But this is an example of infinite because I cannot cross anything out right there. Okay? Does that make sense? You gotta be able to know, tell me if it 
us looking at graphs, you know, or looking at situations like this, you got to tell me if it's jump, infinite, removal, and why it is what it is. Okay? That's what we'll be doing for the next month. Okay? All right. What I want you to do now is turn to your homework back to page nine. Turn back to page nine right now. Page nine. I want you to do one and three right now. I'm going to go over it. Do number one and three using the table. This is not optional right now. Like I can do this home. You're doing it now. One and three. Let's go. Do numbers one and three and look up. All right, guys, on number one, look up here. When I put that in the table, at three, I got an error. There's some type of discontinuity going on there. All right, Posky, what type of discontinuity would be going on there? Because I can factor that down and cancel something out. So that means what's occurring at x equals three, a hole or an asymptote? A hole. Do y'all see that? Okay, what is bad? What's a good value that you can put that's approaching here? Zero point what? One six. 0.16. So, Mr. Fisher, how do I know to do this and not look at the graph? In your directions, it says use the what feature? Table feature. That means put the table on the calculator. Yes. So, if there's a hole, you still use it, but if it's an asset, you don't? What do you mean? Like, is it undefined if there's an asset? No, you're getting that confused with um, You're getting that confused with the graph, and we're just looking at what values it's approaching right here. Same thing, like, we'll go back over what you think in a minute, okay? Right now, no, right, all I want you to know about asymptote hole is, if I ask you what that area is, you can tell me if it's asymptote or hole, okay? Okay, number three. All right, let's put this one in the calculator. I'm going to go back to my table and look at what's going on at 1. Then I do my table. What will be the limit? As I approach from the left and to the right, from the left and the right, from the left and the right, I'm getting very close to 0 0.1. 2.5. I'll say 0 0.25. That's a good, reasonable answer, isn't it? Because you got 2.4 here, 2.26. That's getting very close to 0.25. Does everybody understand that? Yes. Yes, y'all don't get confused about that. Yes. Right here, all you're doing is trying to find an answer between those two things. The only thing I'm throwing in there is asking if it's an acetone hole. That has nothing to do with either one. You still do it the same way. You got me? That's just, I want you to know what's going on at the graph physically. 
So the asymptote or the hole has nothing to do with how to find the limit. You're just just know there's something going on there. Yes. All right. Let's look at five. You better be graphing these right now. Me just not sitting up here. Be very careful on how to put this one in the calculator. Because here you got to put the numerator all in parentheses divided by x. Go back to my table set zero. What would be a good value there? Zero point what? Two two. Zero point two two. Wait, how did you know what to put in your table set? What do you mean? Third side. Wait, the second table. You go up there and you put what number? I put zero. That's where oh, I was. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're gonna omit number seven. I want you to do number nine right now. Number nine will clear up some of the misconceptions we got. Number nine, I want you to do number nine now. Omit number seven, go to nine. It should take you a grand total of a minute. Do number nine now, and we're going over it. Mm-hmm. That's as X approaches negative one from the right. That's our positive. Yes. Yes, it does. Very important. No, not at the moment. I'll explain that in a minute. All right, guys, as x approaches negative 1 from the left, as I'm on this function and I'm negative 1, I'm right here on the x. As x approaches negative 1, from the left, it's approaching what? 2. two. From the right, it's approaching what? 2. Now, here it just wants to know the limit as x approaches negative 1, so you've got to take it upon yourself to look at left and right. Was it approaching the same number? Yes. yes. Now, this question is not here, but what if I asked you this? What is f of negative 1 equal to? If I went to negative 1 and asked you straight up, what is f of negative 1? What would you put? 1. Because that's an open dot there, you would went with a solid dot. That means it's defined. Does that make sense? Okay. D. The limit as x approaches negative 4. Okay. There's no plus or minus afterwards, so you got to take it upon yourself to look at both left and right. Ready? Stop. Don't go anywhere. From the left, it's approaching what? From the right, it's approaching. So what will be your limit? So do 9. And since I did 9 with you, do 11 and 12. 9, 11, 12. It's just the pictures. 9, 11, and 12. Yeah. What now? D would be does not exist because it's approaching to different. And then E would also be does not exist. See you tomorrow. Um, I was just going to let you know that. Following. What is 26 fall on? Yeah. What date is 20? What's up? I think it's Tuesday. So you're going to be gone Wednesday through Monday. Wednesday through Tuesday. Tuesday 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 through I think it's only for Android. Um, I'm not sure uh, Apple has that, um, but it's the full thing, like you can program some stuff or app and everything. What should I do? Call the package. Hey, let me see the app work real quick. It's right there. You know, it's new. If you forget, ask Miss Blackman. She's the one who showed me, mm. and I'm pretty sure everybody that was in her class knows about mm. it. But I think it's only for Android because you have to like uh, download.
download a ROM type thing, and uh, mm -hmm. Apple doesn't want you to download stuff that it doesn't know about. Oh, okay. Have a good one. You all set there? Yep. I think uh, Max, you got your homework? Did you turn your homework in? Did you turn your homework in? Oh, God. Son, you better have it to me tomorrow, okay? Just turn your homework in. Okay? Thank you. 